So as, as I was saying, we have two ways that we could write this problem. And if we use the distributive property, what that tells us is that both of these ways are going to give us the correct answer. So what I was, when we looked at that, was, and this was our definition from the book that's a little obtuse, but the product of a number and a sum is the same as the sum of the individual products and the ad, of the add-ins and the number. Product of the number and the sum is the same as the sum of the products of the add-ins times that number. So what we can do if we're looking at this is if we're given a problem, I'm just going to use a problem from the homework. Let's write it a little bigger on here. Let's say you had 3 times 8 plus 9. I could look up here and I could even think of the patterns that we see here and that which side of this does it look more like? And it looks more like this side. So we could say, well, this would represent the A, the 3. B could be the 8, and C could be the 9. So that tells me that I could actually rewrite it, keeping my numbers in the same variable. So this would be 3 times B, which is going to be 8, plus 3, it's our A again, times C, which is times 9. And then we would have to use PEMDAS, or order of operations, to make sure that we actually had written it correctly. So I would add these together, and I would get 17, parentheses first. Then I would multiply. Feel free to write it out. OK, not a problem. 21, 3, 4, 5, 51. Over here, same thing, 3 times 8. 24 plus 27. If I need to stack them, I can, but I know that that will add together and equal 51, proving that the distributive property is correct and that I can rewrite the problem like this. One way we can also look at it is the 3 times the 8 plus the 3 times the 9. And we can go back and forth. So for our second problem in the homework, we had a similar thing, but we had 4 times 3 plus 4 times 8. And we had to use the distributive property to rewrite it. So I would look again, which side does it look more like? It looks definitely more like this side. I'm seeing two, two multiplication problems being added together. So I'm going to kind of go backwards and see what's the number that is repeating. I have a 4 being multiplied by both of these. So I could put my 4 on the outside of my parentheses and then say, OK, the B represent the 3. I'm doing addition. And then the 8 could represent the C. So now I would say, OK, I've rewritten the problem using the distributive property, or rewritten the expression. And now I would just use order of operations to check to see if they actually were equal. 4 times 3 gives me 12, plus 4 times 8 is 32. So we are looking at 44. Same thing, 4 times 11 gives me 44. And I have the same thing. So this is what we're doing with the homework. We're just rewriting the problem, doing the math, making sure they are equal to each other.